혹시 집 책장에 이 책이 꽂혀 있지 않나요? 전 세계 200만 부, 한국에서만 50만 부가 판매된 인문학 스테디셀러 총균수 지리학자 제레드 다이아몬드가 직접 세계를 탐험하며 집필한 인류 문명 보고서입니다. 건설적 편집증을 실천 중인 그와 직접 만나는 게 쉽지만은 않았습니다. I'm in the age group at greatest risk of the virus. That's why I recommend that you you wear those suits. 책을 사놓기만 하고 아직 다 읽지 못하셨다고요? 그렇다면 오늘이 기회입니다. 한국 방송 최초로 진행되는 총균쇠 저자 직강. 지금 위대한 수업에서 만나보시죠. 전 세계에 흩어져 있는 위대한 생각들을 모았습니다. 어떤 생각은 우리를 저먼 곳으로 데려갑니다. 안녕하세요. Are all countries equally rich today? Of course not. Does every country now at least enjoy equal chances of becoming rich? No, of course not. So let's talk about why geography and history still matter today despite the internet. There are still huge differences in wealth around the modern world. Countries like Luxembourg and many other rich countries have average per person incomes 500 times higher than the incomes of the poorest countries like Burundi. That's a huge difference, that factor of 500, that cries out for explanation. Economists have an answer to that question about why there are rich countries and poor countries. Economists say it's because of good institutions, good human institutions. Institutions means, meaning ways for society to operate things. Good institutions like honest government, obedience of laws, incentives for working hard, incentives for investing your money, and respect for private property rights. For example, economists say, compare the former East Germany with the former West Germany, or compare North Korea and South Korea, neighboring countries with very slight differences in history and geography, but huge differences in institutions, which resulted transparently in big differences in wealth. East Germany poor, West Germany rich, North Korea desperately poor, South Korea rich. And yes, there's no doubt, economists are partly right, good institutions are important. France, for example, has much more honest institutions and more respect for laws and property rights than does the Congo. Partly as a result of its good institutions, France is much richer than the Congo, despite the Congo's mineral wealth. But why did France end up with better institutions than the Congo? The answer is guns, germs, and steel, namely history and geography. France acquired agriculture 6,000 years before the Congo did, and France acquired much more productive agriculture than did the Congo. So France developed chiefs and kings and presidents and guns, germs, and steel long before the Congo. 
that gave France a big head start on developing good institutions. Of course, the Congo hasn't been able to catch up quickly on France's head start of 6,000 years. So history still does matter today. Also, geography still matters today. Here's how you can easily convince yourself of the importance of geography today. You take a map of South, South America, a map of South America with the borders of the 13 countries of South America traced in on the map, and then look up the average national incomes of those 13 countries of South America, and write those numbers for average national incomes on the map. You'll immediately see that South America's three richest countries are the countries in the far south of South America, in South America's temperate zone. Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay, South America's richest countries, and South America's 10 tropical countries are all poorer than those three temperate countries of South America. Even within the single South American country of Brazil, the temperate zone of Brazil in the far south is much richer than the tropical zone of Brazil in the north near the equator. That's one way you can convince yourself of the importance of geography. You can convince yourself of the disadvantage of a tropical location with another test. This time, take a map of Africa, and on the map of Africa, mark the borders, or get a map of Africa with the national borders of Africa's 48 countries marked, and again, look up online the average per person incomes of each African country and write those on the map. You'll see that Africa is like a Big Mac hamburger with a fat hamburger in the center and then the thin pieces of bread on the top and bottom of the Big Mac hamburger. Similarly, Africa has a big central tropical core, like the hamburger of the Big Mac, between two thin slices of temperate zones. And you'll see on your map of Africa, with incomes marked for each country, that the richest countries of Africa are almost all in the thin slices of the temperate zones in the north and in the south, while the countries of the central tropical core of the African sandwich are mostly poor or very poor. Why are tropical countries generally poorer than temperate countries? There are two reasons, the disadvantages of tropical agriculture and the disadvantages of tropical diseases. Although we think of tropical agriculture as being productive, you think that in the tropics, people just stand under the banana trees and wait for the bananas to fall off the trees. In fact, tropical agriculture is less productive than temperate agriculture because of tropical soils being thin and infertile and because tropical insect pests and parasites damage tropical crops. Also, tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever and dengue fever drag down the economies of tropical countries. Workers in the tropics have short lifespans before they die of these diseases, and as long as they're alive, they're often out sick instead of working. And women, mothers in Africa, because so many babies die, are constantly giving birth to babies and nursing babies, and women in the tropics are un unable to join the workforce. So one reason why geography still matters today is the disadvantage of tropical locations compared to temperate locations.